In this video, we're going to do an example calculation for some electrochemistry problems. So we're going to calculate the standard EMF, the EMF, and the standard Gibbs energy of reaction and Gibbs energy of reaction for the following electrochemical cell under the conditions that I've indicated under these following concentrations and pressures below this diagram. Okay, so first thing we got to do is figure out what the half cells are. So in this diagram here, we've got our anode on the left and we've got our cathode on the right the anode being where the oxidation occurs the cathode being where the reduction occurs okay so we've got our anode and the half cell reaction which occurs at our anode so we notice there are three bars here so kind of complicated with more than normal than what's going on here but if we figure out what half cell this is it actually ends up becoming uh, and if we write it this way as an oxidation, as it would occur at the anode, we're going to have the silver solid plus an aqueous chloride ion from that HCl. That is going to react to form silver chloride. And it got oxidized to produce an electron. Then at our cathode, um, we have, well, what do we have here? We've got water, and it's going to be reduced with two electrons in order to form O2 gas and H plus ions here. Okay, so we're going to have liquid H2O plus two electrons. It's going to be yielding one half equivalent of O2 gas plus two aqueous H plus ions <clears throat> in solution. Okay, and we also want to have make sure that these reactions are balanced, so we want to have them multiplied by the proper stoichiometric coefficients. Um, but also we have this uh, kind of ugly one half here as well, so I could get away with just multiplying this top reaction by two, and then I would have two electrons here, two electrons there, and we would be electrically balanced and neutral. But I want to have this O2 uh, be a full O2. So I'm going to have to multiply the bottom times 2 and the top times 4. And that's just going to have the effect of doubling whatever our standard Gibbs energy is and whatever our Gibbs energy of reaction is because we're going to have twice as many uh, moles of what's going on. So we're going to have that times 2. We're going to have our oxidation times 4. Okay, and what are our standard reduction potentials of these reactions? So our top half cell here, our uh, standard reduction potential, and note that this is written as an oxidation because it's at the anode, but as a reduction, the standard reduction potential, which is what we have to look up in tables, uh, the standard reduction potential for this reaction is going to be plus 0.2224 volts. And the standard reduction potential for our cathode reduction here, for our water going to O2 and H+, that has a standard reduction potential, which is equal to plus 1.229 volts. Okay, so our total uh, reaction here ends up being, if we use all these stoichiometric coefficients, multiply things out and simplify, we ended up getting that we have 2H2O, which is liquid, plus 4 Cl minuses, 4 aqueous chloride ions, plus 4 equivalents of solid silver. That goes back and forth to silver chloride, which has a coefficient of 4 plus our O2, which we multiply times 2 from that 1 half, gives us one equivalent of O2 in gas. And then plus, finally, our last thing here is going to be that we have our four H plus ions on this side. And then we had four electrons as reactants and four electrons as products, so those cancel, but I'm not going to write those out. Okay, so we want to calculate our <clears throat> uh, standard EMF of the reaction here. So that's going to equal 
E naught for the cell is going to equal the standard reduction potential of our reduction, which is our cathode, which is on the right, minus the standard reduction potential of the anode, which is on the left. So this is the case because at our anode, we actually have oxidation, not reduction. So in order to get the oxidation potential, we just take the negative of the reduction potential. So that gives us, for the right, we have plus 1.229 volts, minus on the left, plus 0.2224 volts. So that gives our final answer of E naught cell, if we add these two together, ends up being a positive 1.007 volts. So notice here that I didn't multiply these reduction potentials times the number of electrons or the number of equivalents which were occurring there. That's because of the unit of volts, that's joules per coulomb, so that's already an intensive property, that's already per electron. So you don't multiply the reduction potential times the number of moles, uh, that comes in in the Nernst equation whenever we're calculating the Gibbs energy. Okay, so that's our E0 cell, that's part one of four that we're looking at here. So we can continue on. Now we want to calculate uh, the standard Gibbs energy from that E0 of the cell. So according to the Nernst equation, our standard Gibbs energy of reaction is equal to minus NFE, or minus NFE0 cell if we're talking about G0. So N is the number of moles of electrons that get transferred during the reaction, which is going to be four in this case, because we had four total electrons. F is Faraday's constant, and E0 cell is our standard EMF that we just calculated. So if we start plugging in values here, delta R G0 is equal to minus, see, 2 times 2 gives us 4, 1 times 4 gives us 4, so it's 4 electrons moving back and forth, times Faraday's constant, which is 96,485 uh, coulombs per mole. So that's, how many, that's the charge of the electron times Avogadro's number, so that's how many coulombs there are in a mole of electrons, times the standard EMF of the cell, which is positive 1.007 volts, and one volt is equal to a joule per coulomb. So we keep that in mind. So if we do this calculation and plug these numbers into our calculator, you end up getting quite a large number. You get uh, minus 382,400 joules per mole. So I'm going to convert this to kilojoules per mole, which is more convenient for me. So I'm going to have minus 382.4 kilojoules per mole which you get just by taking this number, dividing it by a thousand, going from joules to kilojoules. Okay, so that's our standard Gibbs energy of reaction. So that is quantity number two of interest that we're just gonna check off right there. Okay, now we wanna go from the standard Gibbs energy to the Gibbs energy. So in order to do that, Gibbs energy of reaction is equal to standard Gibbs energy plus RT log of reaction quotient. Okay, so this is where it becomes really important to have a proper balanced chemical reaction in order to get our reaction quotient. <clears throat> so our reaction quotient is going to be uh, each of the sp chemical species in the reaction products on the denominator and or products on the numerator and reactants in the denominator, each raised to the power of their stoichiometric coefficients. So we have, first for products, we have activity of silver chloride to the fourth power, its coefficient, times um, the activity of O2, and that's just, two, that's just one, so we leave that alone, times the activity of H plus to the fourth power, being a four. That's all of our products, so we move on to reactants in the denominator. We have the activity of liquid water to the second power, that's going to be squared, times activity of chloride ions to the fourth power, which are aqueous, 
and we have times the activity of solid silver to the fourth power. Okay, some simplifications we can make right off the bat are that the silver chloride is solid and the activity of solids is taken to be a constant of one. So one to the fourth power is still one. So this simplifies out. Um, you can watch the video on condensed phase activity if you wonder why. Uh, silver is also solid. Its activity is one. One to the fourth is one. So that drops out. Uh, liquid water, liquid, also a condensed phase, also has an activity of one. Squaring that gives you still one. So what's left over is the activity of O2, which we take by taking its pressure relative to one bar, or its fugacity, but we're just going to assume it's ideal. So uh, 0.8 bar relative to one bar is 0.8 for O2, taken just to the first power. Um, H plus, the H plus that is in the products came from our uh, cathode half cell, which is on the right here in our diagram, and that was said to be 0 0.2 molar. So I'm going to put that in there, take that to the fourth power. Standard state for aqueous ions taken to be one molar, so 0 0.2 molar divided by one molar is 0 0.2. Um, we're also assuming uh, for both of these ions that their activities and concentrations are the same. That's pretty reasonable at low concentrations, so we're going to get a pretty good answer. Um, uh, chloride. Chloride came from the reactants. That came from our anode half cell, and that was this HCl, which is on the left here, which we said to be 0 0.1 molar. So relative to 1 molar, that is 0 0.1, also taken to the fourth power. If you calculate these values out, you should get a reaction quotient of 12.8. Okay, so our delta G of reaction is going to be our standard delta G minus 382.4 kilojoules per mole plus um, the gas constant in kilojoules per mole would be 0 0.008314 kilojoules per mole Kelvin. That's just the 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin divided by 1,000. Times the temperature at standard state, 298 Kelvin. Times the natural log of 12.8. Okay, so calculating out all those values, calculating what our delta G of reaction comes out to be, um, we should be getting that our delta G of reaction. Ah, okay, made a mistake here. I misread my misread one part. Okay, so delta G of reaction should be minus three eighty eight point six. So I'm just going to go ahead and try to fix that value here. Minus three. Okay, we're going to clear that out, make that some blank space. Okay, so we're going to have 388.6. Important to read the right value off of your notes. That's the lesson of, of today. Okay, so we're going to make this a 388.6 as well. If I can make that 4 a 6, I don't think I can. Okay, let's just erase that 4 and fix that. Okay, so we're going to make that 388.6. Okay, disaster averted. Continuing on, so we have minus 388.6. Um, this gives us a delta G of reaction of minus 382.4 kilojoules per mole, which is the number that I mistakenly read off earlier. Okay, that is value uh, 3 of 4 here. And I checked the wrong thing up there. Okay. So that was our delta G of reaction. Our E cell remains to be calculated. And in order to get E cell, we're just going to take the opposite of the Nernst equation here and reverse it, try to get the E cell from the delta G. So um, taking, the, taking this reaction here, we're going to take, we have just delta G equals minus NF E cell without the naughts. So what we have is, E cell is equal to minus delta G of reaction 
divided by an F, which is going to be minus minus 382.4 kilojoules per mole divided by uh, number of moles of electrons going back and forth is again 4 total moles times Faraday's constant 96,485 joules per coulomb and you're going to need to do a unit conversion in there as well uh, multiplying times a thousand to get this into joules per mole so that that joules cancels there or or you get the proper units. So what we're going to get there for our final E cell is going to be positive 0 0.9908 volts. And then we're going to have our final result of E cell equals plus 0 0.9908 volts. So we notice here that our concentrations aren't super, super far away from standard states of one molar, one molar, and one bar. So that means our reaction quotient was a small value, a small amount away from one. So it perturbed our standard Gibbs energy of reaction a little bit, giving us a EMF, which is a little bit different than our standard EMF, which we calculated from our initial Nernst equation and our standard reduction potentials.